to see everyone. Um, you know, going over there to Virginia, you really uh, get a little bit of perspective of how much, uh, how special this church is, and I really miss you guys. It's really an honor to come in and share God's word with you. Um, I think it's very, um, I don't know, it's, it's touching for me to be able to see you and, and uh, just uh, catch up on, on life. And so um, today I'll be looking at Jonah chapter 1. Um, please turn to Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Listen carefully as I read to you uh, God's word. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the uh, mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled out the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Let me, let me pray for us. Uh, dear God, we just thank you so much uh, for this time where we can come together as a church and hear your word, Lord. I pray that you speak to us, that your Holy Spirit will be upon us and challenge us um, to um, just understand you, to love you, and to just live like you, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so after a two-year-long journey for me, uh, I finally finished my one-year Bible reading plan. Uh, it took a while. And I, I'm starting again. I started again uh, last month. I'm starting a new one-year Bible reading plan, and I have to say that the Word of God never gets old. I mean, I'm reading the same thing all my life, and I could read the Bible 99 times, and the 100th time, I'll still find something that surprises me, something that um, makes me laugh, something that, uh, that brings up all these questions, um, things that uh, still move my heart and, and challenge me to a new level in my faith. Um, and I think this is especially true of Bible stories that you, that you learned and heard as a kid. And then when you look at it again, um, and you study it you know, a little deeper as a teenager than as an adult, you'll find that these stories that you thought you knew, you thought these stories were about this, then you realize that no, this, this, these stories are actually about something else. And that's especially the, uh, the case with Jonah. Right? Everyone knows a story about Jonah, uh, and everyone thinks that the story about Jonah is about Jonah and what the fish. Right? Everyone thinks about the fish, the big, the big fish that, that eats him up. Um, but if you actually look at the story of Jonah, the, the fish is really not important. It, the story is really not about the fish. The fish comes up about two or three, in only two or three sentences in the entire book. Um, the fish is not, not it. So what is the story of Jonah about it, it, we see that it's about far more, about something far uh, more po uh, powerful. Um, so what is, what is Jonah really about? Um, well, 
We have to take a step back and look at every book in the Bible. Every book in the Bible actually is about the same thing. They talk about the same thing. They, it reveals the character and the purpose of God. That's what each book is about. Each book tells us something about who God is and what he's doing in this world. Each book in the Bible also explains and tells us about Jesus, including the Old Testament. The Old Testament says something about who Jesus is, who God is, and what he's doing in this world. And that's what John, Jonah does as well. It teaches us what God is, what he's doing in its unique perspective. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at Jonah, what it says about God, what it teaches us about Jesus. And then we see how the character of God changes our hearts and our, and our, and our, our actions as well. So first thing we see in, in verse 1 is, Now the Lord, word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. The first thing we see is that Jonah is a prophet. Right? This, this phrase here, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, uh, lets us know that Jonah is a prophet. This phrase comes up multiple times in the Bible. Uh, if you look at Micah, actually, there's just the chapter, the book right after, it says the exact same thing. The word of the Lord now came to Micah. And I think it says it like three or four times in other places. Um, there's also other places in the Bible where we see that Jonah is a prophet of God. Um, but we also very quickly see that jo even though Jonah is a prophet of God, he is a very flawed prophet. I mean, he's right there next to like Samson in the, in the worst prophet hall of fame. I mean, he is a terrible guy. Um, this, <clears throat> I mean, he tries to run away from God. Like, who, you know, run away. He gets himself eaten by a fish. And um, just really foolish. This book tries to show us how flawed and foolish this prophet is. So I have a, I have a map for you. In verse three and four, or two and four, um, Jonah is staying in uh, Jerusalem, at point eight of there. In, in I, think, I guess that's Google Maps. Um, God tells him to go to Nineveh, go to point B, go to Nineveh and tell people that their sins will lead to their destruction, that their rejection of God will lead to God's judgment upon them. And then, what does Jonah do? He rejects God and he sins himself. Right? And he does it in the most extreme way. Like if I, you know, he, he's in Jerusalem in point A, and God says, hey, go to Nineveh. What could he have done? He could have just said, no, I'm just going to stay here in Jerusalem. Right? Or he could, have, he could have actually gone to Nineveh and not done anything. Right? But he does the most extreme rejection, the most open rebellion against God. He goes to Tarshish, point C. He tries to go the furthest away from the place that God tells him to go. He gets on a ship and goes to the ends of the earth. This is the end of, of the known world. Goes to Tarshish um, and tries to flee from God. I mean, this guy is a very broken, flawed, foolish guy. Um, later in the chapters, you know, Jonah, you guys know the story. Jonah ends up in Nineveh. He tells them about the prophecy. Uh, the Ninevites repent and actually come back towards God. God shows mercy and kindness and love and forgives them. And Jonah is angry with God about this. And Jonah is angry that God forgave. Jonah is angry that God showed kindness and mercy. Because, and, and we see that that's why he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He hated the Ninevites. He wanted God to destroy them. Right? This is, this, you know, as we look at the book of, of Jonah, we see that Jonah intentionally tries to show us the foolishness of Jonah. That he's a really terrible, flawed guy. Um, he's full of pride. Right? He doesn't realize, he's, he's full of hypocrisy. He doesn't realize that he's openly sinning against God. And, but he thinks that his sin is different from the Ninevite sins. Right? He's completely blinded by this. Uh, he's very hard-hearted. Um, it shows us that he's very judgmental, that he's very small-minded. Um, he's an open rebellion and very foolish. And all of this, in showing Jonah's flaws, the book is, is, is trying to reveal to us our flaws. Right? Um, if you look at this story, you know, as we look at this story, we say, oh man, Jonah, what a broken guy. What a, fl what a fool. Um, but what, but as, that, as the story does that, um, this story does to us what Nathan, prophet Nathan, did to David, right? He, in the same way that Nathan said, you are that man. You are Jonah. That's what this book is trying to show us, that we are that broken person. We are the ones that, uh, as we look at all the, the, the foolish things that Jonah do, we're supposed, that's supposed to reveal to us all the foolish ways that we are living our lives in this world. See, Jonah is a representative. 
He represents the people of God uh, through whom God wants to work in this world, right? And the book leads us to say, oh man, jo Jonah, Jonah is me. I'm the foolish guy. I'm the guy that's too prideful. I'm the guy that's running away from God. And then it and this book challenges us to change, to let God's uh, um, grace surprise us, right? And it reveals our character, reveals God's character, and then it challenges us, invites us to be uh, back into uh, the purposes of God. So that's what the book of Jonah does, uh, especially the first part of, of Jonah. And so that's what we're going to look at. So there's three things that we see of how that does, how the first part of Jonah does that um, in these first ten chap in, t in these first ten verses. One, number one, kind of one and two, kind of are together. Number one, God invites people to partner with Him in bringing good to the world. All right, let me, let me say that again. God invites people to partner with him in bringing goodness to this world. All right, so here are the Ninevites. They are sinning, rebelling against God. And God could have just done the work himself, right? He could have just sent an angel. He could have just appeared miraculously in a, I don't know, in a tornado or in some cloud and, and thundered upon them and said, you guys are sinning, you know, repent. He could have done that himself. But instead, what do we see? He, he chooses to use Jonah. He chooses to partner with Jonah and work with Jonah to bring this news of judgment, to uh, allow this mercy and, and, and reconciliation to happen. Um, so he chooses Jonah to, do, to, to work with him to do his work uh, in this world. Um, and this is kind of what we see even from the beginning of the book in Genesis, the uh, beginning of the Bible. Uh, God creates this good world, in Genesis 1, with all this potential, right? And then he appoints these unique creatures, us humans, to partner with him in bringing more goodness out of this potential, right? So he asks Adam and Eve, creates them in his image, and, and, and commands them to uh, uh, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. And what, is, what does Adam and Eve do? They, they start gardening, right? So they take this raw material and, and turn it into something beautiful, useful, Right, uh, something enjoyable, and that's what what would Adam and Eve do with God. They're they're working together to make this world better and, and bring goodness and God's love and, and creativity in, in this world. And so this is what God does uh, for us as well. That's why that's one of the reasons why God created us. He wants to partner with us, work with us to um, bring goodness to this world. Right. So you think about your passions, the things that you're passionate about the talents that God has given you, uh, the opportunities that he's, he's presented to you. And what God wants is he wants to work with you to bring uh, goodness and creativity and beauty and justice and mercy and kindness, equality, and all these good things. He wants us to work with him to bring all these things into this world, right? And each one has a different way of doing that, right? Some of you guys are gifted in music. Some of you guys are most of you guys are like tech. <laughs> so I guess the city is doing a lot of tech. A lot of you guys are, are you know, in the medical or work with people. Um, all of these are ways that God has, has um, created you with this passion, these opportunities, so that we can work together to bring goodness to this world. But point two is that Jonah rebels against this. Right? Jonah rebels against God's plan for his life. This is what we see um, constantly throughout history, that people rebel against God. They, you look at Jonah. Jonah wants to create his own vision for his life. Same thing, this is what we see in Adam and Eve, right? God is working with Adam and Eve, but what Adam and Eve, they do is they, they reject God. This is what we see with Jonah. This is also what we see with us, right? We humans don't want to partner with God. We instead want to rebel. We want to create a world in the way, on our terms, our own terms apart from God, right? So we want to live our own lives. We have this a view of what we think is good and right uh, and, and evil and wrong, right? And so this is why, why Adam and Eve ate that apple. The, the Satan said, uh, the, the serpent said, you will have knowledge of good and evil. And they preferred that instead of, of what God said was uh, good and evil, right? So we have this vision for what we want in our lives. We want to live our lives apart from, from God. We think that this is what's best for us. I, I like this. I think this is what's good. That's what I'm going to do. And we run from this partnership that we have, we can have with God. So if you look at what Jonah does here, 
specifically. He says, it says three times that Jonah ran away from the presence of the Lord. Right? He says in verse 3, rose to flee from Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord. It says it again in verse 4, away from the presence of the Lord. It, it ends in verse 10. It says that people knew, all the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Now this presence here, what, what this is, uh, me, means, it's not just like a proximity, right? Uh, what Jonah is doing is he's running, uh, it means, it's talking about a relationship with God when you're in the presence of God. It's, it means this partnership that we ha have with God. Jonah is running away from that. He no longer wants to partner with God. He no longer wants to be in relationship with God. Jonah runs away and, and tries to live a life that he wants to live, right? Um, just, you know, we, have, we see that God has this purpose for this world. He wants to bring justice. He wants to bring mercy and, and restore Nineveh and all the people of Nineveh, Nineveh. He wants to bring kindness and love. But Jonah doesn't want to be a part of that at all. Right? In his, you know, he has his own world. He has his own purposes for life of what he thinks is right and wrong, what's good for his life. He, he, wants, he wants to live his life in the way that will make him happy. Right? In his eyes... The Ninevites deserve death. That's going to what that's what is going to make him happy, right? And so he goes and runs away from God. And again, when we see Jonah do that, we're supposed to be reminded that this is us. We do that as well. We are the running man, and we're in. in, in see, God and us, we are in, in, in competition for what uh, in competition for what this. Uh, uh, we're, we have these competing visions of what uh, life we think life is supposed to be about. Right? We, we, God says, this is what the good life is. This is what we're supposed to be doing in our lives. But we say, no, I think this is what's good for my life. And we run away. And this is what Jonah does. And sadly, and this is kind of the uh, sad irony, is that he thinks he's running for his life. Right? He thinks he's found his life, that God is ruining his life. Um, but what we see is that God, he's actually running from life. Right? He's running from the good life. He's running from the life that God is offering him, right? He, we see this amazing thing that God is doing in this world. He's, he has this movement, movement of his grace, and he's restoring an entire city back to uh, his presence, right? Um, but Jonah doesn't want to be a part of that, right? He, um, and we see that he actually is running away from the joys and, and the purpose and the goodness of life. And this is what Luke chapter 17, 33 says, right? Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. Right? Those of us that try to hold on to our vision for life, those of us that, that try to create our lives apart from God and try to hold on to that, in the end, we'll be like Jonah and we will lose it. Right? But for those of us that say, look, this life that I think is good for me, all these plans that I have, all these things that I think are good for me and bad for me, if we set that aside and trust in God and the life that God has for us and, and partner with God and try to see what God is doing in this world and work with him, we see that we actually find life, right? This is what Jonah is trying to, to teach us, that each book in the Bible tries to reveal the character of God and, and, the purposes, and his purposes in this world. We see that Jonah is trying to show um, that God is a merciful God, a God of justice, a communal God, a relational God that wants to work with us and partner with us to bring goodness in this world. Um, but we also see that we are, are like Jonah. Jonah represents us, um, and we are rebelling against God in the same way that Jonah has been. Right. So Jonah represents us as human beings, but we also see that Jonah represents one special human in particular. Right? Jonah represents all of humanity. But there's this one human that he particularly represents. And, and the story, um, um, you know, it reveals to us, it kind of foreshadows to us this particular human, and that's, of course, Jesus, right? We also said that each book shows us something about Jesus. And Jonah does the same thing. In the same way that Jonah represents us humans, just Jonah also represents who Jesus is and what he's going to do. Um, and what we see is that, jo that Jesus is the new and better human. Right? He is the new and better human. Um, so in the same way that Jonah represents what we are as humans, 
Jonah also points to Jesus, the new human that we can be. Right? This is what Jonah does. And so this is one of the most, um, I think, interesting things for me, seeing how Jonah is sort of a foreshadowing of what Jesus is. This, so jo Jonah is this old human that we are, and, and it points to Jesus Christ, this new human that we can be. And the, and the New Testament lays this out for us, and especially in Luke. So there's a story in Luke, in Luke chapter 8, and it compares um, Jonah and this one story of Jesus Christ. Um, you guys know the story of, of where, where Jesus and the disciples are on this boat. And there's a lot of, lot of parallels of Jesus and Jonah in, in this story. And it's trying to show us that Jesus is the new Jonah. So let, you guys remember the story? So disciples and Jesus are on this boat, same way that Jonah is on a boat. And in both stories, they suddenly a huge storm comes and threatens uh, to destroy them. All, all the people are scared. In both stories, the prophet is sleeping. Right? Jesus is sleeping. Jonah is sleeping. In both stories, the boat is about to sink, and the men are scared, and they, start, and they wake the prophet. And they kind of rebuke him. What are, you, what are you doing? How can you sleep during this? Do you not care about this situation? Right? In both stories, the storm miraculously calms. Right? And in both stories, the men that are on the boat are more scared of God than they were of the storm. Right? So there's, Luke tells this account of Jesus Christ and tries to show how it very much parallels uh, Jonah. The only difference uh, in Jonah and Jesus is that Jonah is running away from God. Running away from the plan and the mission that God has. But Jesus, we see, he's running towards his mission on earth. Um, Jonah also gets eaten by a fish for three days and three nights. This doesn't happen to Jesus, right? But Jesus, later on, he prophesies what will happen, how he also uh, tries to show how he will be the new Jonah. He says in Matthew, in the same way, for just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Right? We see how Jesus Christ wasn't running away from the mission of God. He was running towards it. Right? And he was going towards the place where he would be eaten and, and die and be buried and then resurrected in three days. Right? And he does this. He runs towards God's plan to bring mercy and goodness to this world. So what, is, what does all this mean? What is this parallel of Jesus, Jesus and, and, and Jonah supposed to be? Well, before he finished his mission, he tells his disciples, um, he says, follow me. Right? Follow me. I am the new human. I am the person that you're supposed to follow. You are like Jonah. You're living like Jonah. You're following Jonah in this world. But instead, follow me. And, so he, and then he goes on this mission, dies for our sake, so that we can follow him. So that we can be uh, this new person. That we can set aside our old selves, our old way of thinking, and, f and become this new human being like Jesus Christ. And we see that through the death on the cross of Jesus Christ, it makes it possible for us to become this new human and become empowered by the Spirit to be able to follow him. So this is what the story of Jonah is talking about. It shows us that God has a plan for our lives. He wants to work with us. He wants to be in our lives. He wants to be in relationship with us. But we, like all humans, have rebelled against him. But we uh, also see... God's consistent love for us. He invites us to follow him, to be reunited with him. He died on the cross. He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross so that, it, so that uh, uh, this relationship is possible um, so that we can be restored and, and as a new human. This is God's plan for us. This is our rebellion, and this is our invitation to come back and follow him. So as you guys think about the story of Jonah, think about... The, the path that you're living in this world. Um, this story invites you to, to ask yourself, are, are you, what are you living for? Have you just been living your life apart from God? Or are you just asking yourself, hey, what is, what is good for me? What do, what do I want out of life? Or are you seeking out what God is doing? Are you, um, 
Are you, uh, do you have an open heart and open ears to, see, to accept the calling of God in your life? To join him in this mission? Um, to bring goodness through this church? Through your work? Through your family? Through your community? Um, or do you see the, the passion of Jesus Christ and his um, desire to work um, and, and complete his mission? Does that move you and, and change you and challenge you um, to be like him? I hope that it does. I hope that seeing this, that you would accept God's invitation to work with him, to partner with him in bringing goodness to this world. Let's pray.